to what you see is what you get. I'm Ed O'Connor, President and Founder of Simulcast Solutions. This video is to introduce the new SecureSync GPS Master Oscillator from Spectracom. For more information, the data sheet, manual, and other information can be downloaded from www.simulcastsolutions.com. This video is going to cover the land mobile radio application of this product, focusing on voice and paging simulcast and narrowband. SecureSync is a one rack unit high, 14 inch deep, modular GPS master oscillator. It does come with mounting ears for rack mounting in a 19 inch rack. Its certifications include UL, FCC Part 15, CE, Rojas, and WE, and comes with a standard 5 year warranty. There are three oscillator flavors which give you different accuracy and holdover specifications. There's a high performance OCXO, a high performance low phase noise OCXO, and a rubidium. Each of these has different parameters in terms of accuracy and holdover time. Okay, the information is contained in the data sheet and in the manual, so you can compare those three options. Obviously, from a pricing standpoint, the OCXO is most cost effective, low phase noise OCXO is next most cost effective, and rubidium, because of its holdover characteristics, is the most expensive. From a power standpoint, this unit comes and can be powered via AC, which I believe is 90 to about 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz. Or you can order this with a DC option. There's a 12 volt DC option and a 24, 48 volt DC option. If you would like, you can get this unit with AC and DC power. If AC is present, it uses AC to run the unit. If AC is no longer there, it reverts over to the DC. And once again, the DC can either be 12 volts or it can be a wide range 24, 48 volt supply. The operating temperature range of the unit is minus 30 to plus 60 degrees C. There is in fact a browser for configuration and monitoring. That's how you set up the device itself. There is an SNMP EMIB available, which allows you to, to set up traps and monitor the unit and bring it into an alarming system of your choice. Networking and security features include NTP and simple network time protocol. It supports both IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. LDAP and RADIUS authentications, SSL and SSH, and it can be given address by DHCP, or you can hard code the address you want it to be via the RS-232 port on the front, or in fact the web browser once you've set up communications. As far as inputs to sync or discipline to, it can sync to GPS, which is its normal configuration in LAN mobile. Okay, this device with its GPS receiver will in fact support 18 dB cable loss, which is about 300 feet of LMR 400, even more a superflex. There is precision time protocol coming approximately first quarter of 2011. That will let you actually take time off the network and use in the system. At this point in time, I'm saying that's appropriate for backup. Once we get some real world experience, that might be an alternative to GPS as the primary timing source. However, I would rather be more conservative and say it's a, it's a backup to GPS at this point in time. For other applications, not land mobile radio, there is a SASM, which is a military version of the GPS receiver inside. You can in fact time off iRig or time off 10 megahertz but those aren't accurate enough for simulcast or narrow banding. The outputs on the chassis, the standard outputs, include 10 megahertz, one pulse per second, and an IP port. The 10 megahertz signal is on a BNC. It's plus 13 dBm into 50 ohms. The one pulse per second 
is a TTL level signal. Its leading edge is within, I believe it's about 50 microseconds, excuse me, 50 nanoseconds of GPS's on time point. The IP port allows control through the web browser and SNMP and Telnet. Option modules applicable to LAN mobile radio include a 10 megahertz module and a 5 megahertz module. In early 2011, there will be a module available which will support generation of the CTCSS tones. There will be another module available to support a DS1 framed all ones output and also some additional multiple one pulse per second outputs for those systems that need multiple one pulse per seconds. Other modules which aren't necessarily applicable to LAN mobile radio, which, would, which might be useful in the unit itself, include a multi-port Ethernet for multiple isolated NTP outputs, iRig, RS-232 and RS-485 timecode, and half-print timecode. Ballpark pricing of SecureSync, the base unit is $3,500 to $4,500, depending on the power selected. Plug-in modules run $300 to $1,000 each, depending on the modules that you want. So for an entry-level device with one 10 megahertz, one one pulse per second, and 115 volts AC, about $3,500, antenna and surge protector add another $500 or so. A unit with four 10 megahertz outputs runs about $4,200 or so. And with the four 10 megahertz outputs and a couple CTCSS tones, that's going to run you just under $5,000. Accessories that are needed for SecureSync include a Model 8225 GPS antenna. Once again, this supports up to 18 dB of cable loss. A surge protector, Model 8226, which is recommended in all GPS installations. If, in fact, you need additional 10 megahertz, 5 megahertz, or 1 pulse per second, there are also different distribution amps available from Spectrocom, depending on how many outputs you need and redundancy and backup power supply, things like that. There are three LEDs below my finger. The top indicates power present, sync, and fault. Those are lit appropriately, depending on whether the unit is powered, when it's in sync, and if in fact there's a fault condition, the fault condition lights up. There are arrows and push buttons, which mate with the four-line liquid crystal display that allows you to see the IP address of the device, see alarms, and also configure the outputs of the device. Okay, you get around the different menus by your push buttons, your scrolling, and accept or deny. There's a six digit time display on the front that can be set for either 12 or 24 hours and an RS-232 serial port for configuration. Moving around to the rear, we'll start off with a GPS antenna connection, an end connection. On the far side, we typically have our AC power. If DC power is used, there's a military type connector, three pin connector on, that will be mounted on the board. The Ethernet port, one pulse per second, and 10 megahertz. There are six slots for option boards to be put inside. This happens to be a three-port, five megahertz, op five megahertz option board, which you can put inside the unit. These devices can be configured at will, so you can put five megahertz boards inside, ten megahertz boards, and, for example, the upcoming CTCSS board. So this is the rear panel of the unit for connecting the signal levels that you'll be using in the radio system. In closing, Spectrocom's been manufacturing simulcast frequency references for well over two decades. We're based in Rochester, New York, and are presently a division of the Aurolia Group. For factory support, once you have the product, please dial 585-321-5801 and ask for, fact ask for factory support. If you just need to see the manual or data sheet, you can once again download those from www.simulcastsolutions.com. Thank you.